G'day! Some of you might recognize this blast from the past as in a Jens Event 408 old school console 90s early 2000s you would have seen this kicking around especially in Australia but yeah they definitely um, made it overseas as well and what I've done is I've still got the brain of the the um, processor in there but I've I pretty much bypassed it completely built my own Jan's card bus interface over here which you know I'll eventually release some code and details about for anyone any weirdos like me who are into doing weird shit like that but um, this board's pretty much an Atmel microprocessor and an Ethernet interface so this is going off to the computer and at the moment I'm able to read all the faders read all the buttons, read the knobs, read um, all the key presses, everything, so, and right to the LEDs and control it, so, it's not really a Jans 408 anymore, um, at the moment you can see I'm simulating a MA2 interface here, I don't know if you can see that, but it says channel, I can easily go 12, 12 at 50, um, and over here I can, you, you know, you can select different groups. So um, change the default to group and now I'm selecting group 12 at 50, group uh, 1 at 20, you know. And uh, if I hit store, I can store it to any of these faders. And uh, of course you can um, select, over here you've got beam color, group, fixture, uh, scroller. Yeah, I know I replaced scroller with channel because there was no real channel button, but... Um, just say you hit uh, position, store, bang. So I've stored a, this palette card up here. Is, you know, I've got 20 positions to store there, 20 colors, 20 beams. So a little bit limited, but good fun, you know. I um, spent a fair bit of time reading through the documentation that I found online for the Gens 408 and reversing it. And, and um, big credits to uh, David... Who used to work at Jans? Who um, did the hardware on this? I, I got in, uh, got in touch and got some little tips off him, but pretty much was able to work out most of it from the um, from the manual that I found online. There's a, there's there's quite a few intricacies, but uh, yeah, I got these eight assigned masters, twenty four faders across there, but only twelve um, or tw forty eight faders, but twelve leads. So, yeah, kind of working through it, it's good fun, you know, like, um, possibility, like, uh, it, it, fascinating how technology changes, because in the 90s, this thing's got, like, FPGAs and everything inside it, There's a lot of processing power in there, uh, which was state in the art of the day to make this work just as a, you know, a 48 channel preset console with fixtures. It's actually got two outputs, so uh, 1024 channels. But but um, this Atmel running at um, 16 megahertz is able to refresh the whole surface, and uh, I'm sending it over Ethernet to a PC as well. And yeah, it's one step away from um, talking straight to MA through the Ethernet uh, adapter here. So. This board is, uh, I'll just pop it out, let's go and have a look. So this is the CAN bus interface. This is a Tensi 2 module, or Tensi 2 um, plus plus module, but yeah, basically just a basic um, Atmel chip and a um, WizNet Ethernet interface here. And these are, uh, oh, I forgot what they're called. They're octobus transceivers anyway. You only need two to form the, the master side of the puppet interface. So I don't say slave anymore. Apparently it's out of fashion. Um, yeah, but this little board here I built connects into the... I cut the floppy drive out. Yeah, shocking. Can't see it, but um, inside the brain isn't connected anymore. The old Jan's brain. It's still there, but it's not um, doing anything at the moment. There's still enough code space and memory in here to drive a DMX output, so this could turn straight into a DMX surface or um, through the internet connect, uh, through the Ethernet connect to MA2 and uh, anything else. And I've got a PC app for it as well. I can 
I'm doing um, filtering in the photos here. There's a little bit of a hardware issue, but come over here to the um, what's called the MasterCard, but we're not going to call it the Ma well, yeah, we'll call it the MasterCard. But um, see the values for the wheels they're changing, but you can see how every fader stops at one. It doesn't go quite to zero. It'll go to two fifty-five. Never quite worked that out apparently, Jens, but. Um, we fixed that in the software, so that's all good fun. And yeah, let's. Just... So, what, what can I do? I can go fader 12 at 50, or I can go, let's go over here, repurpose scroller. So, channel, change the channel default 12 through 24 at 75. Um, we can do fixture 12.2 at 50, you know, so there's not all the buttons here, obviously, but we'll be able to emulate a lot of the, um, facilities that are available on the MA2 as well, so. Uh, for anyone who's weird and interested in this crazy stuff, I'll eventually put a GitHub repository with the code in it, and um, it'll have details about how to build this hardware as well that I've made. And, um, yeah, good bit of fun. Go COVID. Anyway, I'll probably never use this in a live situation. I might. Like, actually, it's really cool because I love the Surface. It's got 48 plus eight faders straight off the bat. Um, 